So suppose we have this linked list one, one, three, six, seven, right? And if you run this, yep, print on the screen nine three. I want to also print the number of elements on the screen, right? Let's say right after the linked list has been printed. How can I do that? Well, we can create a function just for that. And it's going to be very simple. If you know how to iterate over a linked list, you will know how to do any operation that is per node. In this case, adding one to a variable. So as a demonstration, if I make this count node pointer root, I don't need a double pointer again, because I am not modifying the root itself. I'm just getting some information out of it. And I'm going to use a for loop here. So for node pointer current equals root. So I'm going to start at root. Do that until current is null and current equals current arrow next. That's the step. We've seen this before. So what do we do inside the for loop? Well, we for every single element inside the linked list, all we do is simply increment a variable. So we first have to have the variable. So I'm gonna say int, let's say call it, let's call it C equals zero. And we're gonna do C plus plus inside the uh, inside the for loop. That's actually kind of nice. And then return C at the end of the loop. And now if I try to print this on the screen, so say printf linked list has percent D elements, elements, right? And backslash n. If I type in here and call the function count of root, remember just root because it's already a node, a node pointer. We don't need uh, the reference to that root because we're not changing it. And if I try to run this, I get a linked list has five elements. So that's very simple. Now what I want to do is introduce you to recursiveness inside uh, basically linked list related functions. So how do we make this function recursive? Well, at one point, we first have to call it uh, call itself. That's that's the main principle about recursiveness. Let's create another function called again int count. And this guy is going to take in a node, right? So node, node, call it. And what we want to do is, well, if the node is null first, if the node is null, then we know it's zero. So the linked list is empty. Hmm. That's nice. So we can say here, if node equals null, then return zero, there's nothing to count. But if node is not null, that means that there are elements, but we want to call this function forward. So what we can do, so for example, this linked list, we have five elements here, but we also have one element from here, plus the number of elements inside this linked list, which has four elements. So if the root was to be here, so we can sort of make this into a, a recursive call. So we can return one plus count arrow next. Right? So if you pass in count arrow next, it's as if we just cut one element from the linked list, but only for the function itself, we didn't really change the, the root itself. So if you say here, one plus count of node arrow next, then if, for example, the linked list is just one element long, what's going to happen? Well, we first get into this guy, we get a root, root is not null. So we get one, one plus this is what? Well, this guy, we know that is going to pass null to count. So then the second time we enter, this guy is going to be null. So it's going to return zero. So we get one plus zero. And of course we return this. So we just return one for an, for a linked list that just has one element for two elements. Again, we're just going to enter this path first. So there's going to be one plus the next node, the second node. Now the second node is not null because the linked list has two elements. So it's going to go one plus something else, which is null because it's the third element and the third element doesn't exist. So the second call is going to return one plus zero. And the first call is going to return one plus 
1. I hope this makes sense. So in a recursive function, you always need to have a uh, an exit condition, basically. If you don't have this, this case is just going to go forever and ever and ever. You have to have some place where this ends, <clears throat> assuming the linked list is created correctly. Remember, with the loops, uh, with the linked list that have loops in them, this is not going to end ever. But that's not really a problem. So also let's call this different name because these guys now have the same name. So count recursive and here as well. And let's try to call it and see if it works. So if I change this to count recursive and run this, you'll notice I still get linked list has five elements. That's because of the technique that you that we used here. So what that did is basically use this algorithm where it said, okay, well, the count of the whole list is the count of uh, one plus the count of the list that starts at the next element where the root is the second element actually. So you do that again, one plus this guy, the rest of the list. And then again, it's the count of this guy is one plus, well, these two elements. And then the count of this guy, these two elements, is one plus just seven, plus just the, the node seven, which is just one node, which is just one, because uh, here we have null. So since we have null, remember, we return in our function zero. I hope this was useful and a nice introduction to recursive functions related to linked lists. Now, I'm not against learning recursive functions and how they work, but in production, you shouldn't usually work with recursiveness because as you can see, it's kind of difficult to understand the way it's uh, doing things. And most of the languages are not really optimized for such function calls. If you're using something like Lisp, for example, which is all about recursiveness, then sure, by all means, uh, use recursiveness, but this is not optimized for recursiveness. And if you're going to see, you're better off just using the iterative functions like these. All right. Okay. If you do have any questions, do leave them down in comments below or on our discord server. Take care. Bye.